last week, my husband Peter brought me on a spontaneous Disneyland day trip. And of course, like with everything I do, I'm always finding the parallels with business because there's always something we can learn, right? Especially from Disney, which at the end of the day is a pretty amazing business to model after whenever we can. So this video is all about sharing my observations with you on what I found interesting that Disney does and how we can apply that to our own small online businesses. And if you like videos like this where we analyze other existing businesses and figure out ways to apply them into our own, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Hi, my name is May and I help makers, artists, and designers make a full-time living from selling their handmade products online. The first thing, and I have always given this example when explaining this, is Disney is a master at funnels, not funnel cakes. I was actually surprised to not find any there, but I mean funnels as in a guided experience for your customers. Anytime you go for a ride at Disney, there are these metal posts called stanchions with metal links that keep you in line. So you have nowhere else to go but follow the zigzag of these posts. They create a boundary and makes it very easy for people to follow along. Now, more than that, once you get onto the ride and you're done with it, there are very clear instructions for where to go next. There are arrows on the floor, there are signs on the walls, and it'll all tell you to exit to your right, follow the exit signs, and then lo and behold, you're out and back into the park again. This guided flow is easy for people to follow. It keeps traffic moving smoothly and tells you exactly where you need to go and what you need to do next. If you think about it, it is just like a funnel. Every business online should have a funnel that gives you the exact same experience. If you sell on your own website, you probably already have a funnel. It starts with maybe your home page or your product listing page. Then you have signs pointing to the next step, which is your add to cart button. Then people go to the cart page, then to the checkout page where they buy. If any one of these steps is not performing well or it's not clear, then you're not going to have very many sales. Imagine if at Disney, those stanchions offered five different paths instead of one. Or after you finish your ride, it's not clear where to go and there's no telling you what to do next. It would be pandemonium, right? And people would not have a good experience. So if you want sales to flow smoothly on your website, you need to create more boundaries so it's easy for people to follow along and know exactly what they need to do next. Next up, I noticed there were a lot of carts scattered around the park selling soda, churros, and all sorts of snacks to eat. These aren't very expensive, usually just a few dollars here and there, but did you know that in one year, one park can make millions of dollars from selling just their churros? So to scale this back down to our online businesses, these are what we call add-on sales, and they can be cross-sells, upsells, or downsells. Basically, once someone has already decided that they want to buy something from you, which is like in Disney, someone is already at the park, then getting them to buy another thing from you is so much easier and increases how much money you make from that same one person. So if you haven't yet, you definitely want to look into how you can install some upsell or cross-sell app onto your site to get people to buy more from you. But another lesson from this is that those snacks are relatively affordable. I mean, a Disney ticket is upwards of 100 bucks per person, right? But you can get a churro for $5.50. So it's a no brainer, why not? This is where you want to have impulse purchase products available in your shop. So for example, if most of your products are 50 to $100, then you might want to introduce a small line of products that are say five to $15. Since we're talking about churros, I also noticed something really cool. Churros are deep fried in oil, right? These churro carts weren't exactly set up to have those kinds of cooking equipment, nor would it necessarily be safe to do so because there's so many people. So it was really interesting to see that the churros were already pre-cooked. And so all the staff needed to do was finish cooking it, warm it up, and then dip it in sugar and cinnamon. I also read how their turkey legs are purchased already smoked and pre-cooked. I thought this was genius because it helps Disney save on time and cut down on costs. They'll be able to sell a whole lot more snacks because they've systematized their fulfillment process. Customers don't have to wait so long and they can serve way more people in the same amount of time. So how can we apply this to our own business? What's a part of your production process that you can do in batches now and then finish it up quickly when an order actually comes in? For example, say you're a sewer and you make hand-sewn bags or clothing. Maybe you can pre-cut the fabric ahead of time and then stash them away. So when an order comes in, 
you need to just assemble it. That will help you save on space since it's so much easier to store flat pieces of fabric in a stack than a 3D finished handbag, right? Just some ideas to get the brain juices flowing. Now, when we went to Disney, it was raining so hard, but I was surprised to see how many people still went because Disney is known to be a good time and a good experience for people that even bad weather can't keep them away. And that made me think and reinforce just how important it is for us to have a really great product. Because if people love your product and you make something that people want, then marketing and promoting your shop later on becomes so much easier than if you were trying to promote a product that you're not sure what people want. Okay, so now let's talk about branding. Before we went to Disney, it was already raining that morning, right? So we stopped by CVS to buy some rain ponchos. You can get them there for like $3.59. Now, when we got to Disney, of course, they sell their own rain ponchos, right? And a lot of people were wearing them. They actually looked almost identical. And guess how much they were? $12 at Disney. Now, that's not terrible, but it is three times more than a generic poncho from the drugstore, and people were still buying them. This is the power of putting the Disney brand logo on a generic poncho. Now, I'm not saying to go and put the Disney logo on all of your products now. That would be IP theft and illegal. My point is that it's important to build up a strong brand for your shop that people can recognize. And this is why selling on Etsy is not a good solution for long-term success because your individual shop's brand is merely an afterthought. People who shop on Etsy only remember Etsy's name and they will rarely remember your own shop name, which means there is no customer loyalty and you can't charge higher prices if you need to. If that really resonates with you and you're nodding your head, go and hit that like button. It is so much easier to build a brand on your own website. Yes, it does take time and you'll probably even make sales more slowly on your own site than on Etsy at first, but in the long run, you're going to have a better, more successful, more profitable business. So something to think about. Oh my God, this other thing that Disney did that I thought was so genius. The park was going to close early at 8 p.m. because they were going to start their after dark event, which at the time was a Valentine's Sweethearts Night. So anyone who was already in the park during the day you have to leave. And if you want access to the After Dark event, you need to buy a whole other separate ticket for that. Now, what's genius about that is Disney is basically commanding twice the number of tickets for a single day of admissions. It's like saying, okay, we have 30 days in the month to sell tickets, right? But now they've just effectively extended that to 38 days worth of ticket sales. I think this is another great and very creative way for upselling to your customers and getting them to buy more from you. And of course, let's talk about their animatronics. These probably take a long time to build, right? The paint, the details, the voices, the movements. All the rides we went to were powered by animatronics to deliver the experience. There was not a single staff member aside from the ones that help you get into and out of your seat. Now, Disney has essentially completely automated their fulfillment process. It was so interesting to see how few people were needed to actually operate an entire ride. Now, of course, you can't see the people behind the stage and how many technical staff are required to maintain and upkeep the animatronics, but that's a part of any business, right? We always have to do certain tasks to maintain it from time to time. For example, when your sewing machine breaks, you repair it, right? But it made me think, how much are we not automating in our business and can we do it more? People still love the rides. And so the automations didn't take away from the enjoyment of the experience. So I think we need to lean more into software and tech to help run our businesses more smoothly and to be more profitable. That's what I do. And people ask me all the time how I run multiple six to seven figure online businesses at the same time. It's because I use a lot of tech and automations. So what's something you do every single day or week that you might be able to automate instead to save you on time? Now let's talk about social proof because it is so powerful. So Peter and I, we don't really care about churros, but everyone was getting churros. The line for some of the churro carts were so long and people were posing and taking pictures with their churros. So we were like, all right, let's get one and see what the hype is all about, right? <laughs> and by the end of the day, we had eaten not one, but three churros. It was just so good. So crispy on the outside and soft on the inside. It was. And Disney got an extra $16.50 from us that day. That is the power of social proof. When you see other people loving a product, having a good experience, taking pictures of themselves using your product, 
which by the way is called user-generated content in the online space. These elements help build incredible trust with your own products and new customers are much more likely to buy from you because of that. So last Thanksgiving, my brother and his family came to visit, right? They have two little kids and we went to Universal Studios. So having been to another theme park very recently, it was easy for me to compare the experience with Disney because it's fresh in my head. Universal felt very commercial to us. It didn't have any spirit to it. And the rides were, well, for one, crazy long to wait for. But once you got to the ride, you kind of just sat there and watched a show that was a few minutes long. It was just generally kind of disappointing. And let me tell you, Disney was night and day. Disney are masters of art and you can really feel their heart and soul through everything they do. Their rides were so much fun, even if it wasn't one of those fast, heart-dropping rides. And the animatronics they use, the sound, design, the lighting, the music, every ride we went on was beautiful. And the Peter Pan one almost made me cry because you felt like you were flying above the city and you could see all these beautiful city lights beneath you. Anyway, my point is, put your love into your work and people can see and feel that energy. When you care, it makes it so much easier for other people to care as well. If you're a Disney fan, tell me what your favorite ride is so next time we go, I'll be sure to check it out. If you enjoyed this video and you're looking for how to drum up more traffic and sales in your online store, check out my free workshop where I show you how we make six to seven figures every year selling our handmade products across multiple online stores. It is totally free and worth your time. The people who've come to the workshop have had really amazing takeaways and have always learned new things that they can apply into their business today. So there's a link in the description where you can go sign up for that so go sign up and watch that now.